Many people don't know how to make gas from weed, and there's one big secret you probably never knew. In this video, I'll show you something that might amaze you. How something considered useless like weed can actually be turned into an incredible energy source. Here, I'm using a 60 liter jar as the main container for the brewing process. This jar will later serve as a fermentation vessel for the weeds I've collected previously. Now, I'm going to drill two holes in the lid of this jar. The first hole will be used to attach the main hose for gas release, while the second hole will serve as an additional air inlet to ensure proper fermentation in the jar. Once both holes are ready, I'll start installing the hoses. Here, I'll use two pieces of hose, sized to fit the holes I made earlier. The first is for the gas outlet, and the second is for the additional air inlet. Once it was positioned correctly, I immediately glued it in place using a glue stick to prevent air leaks. This glue stick is perfect because it seals tightly and creates a strong connection between the cap and the hose. This process is crucial, as even the slightest leak could cause the gas produced by the weed fermentation to escape before it can be contained. So, make sure the glue completely seals the hose to ensure a tight seal and safety. Now, I'm going to start cutting the weeds that will be used as the main ingredient for producing gas. Here, I'm using the weeds growing around the house. Here, I've prepared the weeds I collected earlier, and now I'm going to start chopping them into small pieces. This process seems simple, but it's crucial for speeding up the decomposition and fermentation process. The smaller the grass pieces, the easier it is for the microorganisms to work to produce gas in the jar. I cut them evenly to maximize the results and produce more gas. These weeds will eventually become the main ingredient in the natural gas formation process, so this cutting step shouldn't be taken lightly. While it may seem like a simple task, it's these small pieces that will ultimately yield remarkable results during the fermentation process. After I've placed the chopped weeds into the jar, I'll add a little salt and sprinkle it evenly throughout. The salt isn't just a regular addition, it also helps speed up the natural fermentation process in the jar. In addition to salt, I also added lemon slices to the jar. I chose lemons because their natural acid content can help speed up the fermentation process and prevent unpleasant odors from forming during gas formation. Furthermore, the fresh aroma of lemons also makes the final product cleaner and less pungent than regular fermentation. In the next step, I cut the lemon in half and only took the juice to add to the jar. This lemon juice will mix with the weeds and salt, helping speed up the fermentation process while maintaining a fresh aroma. After adding the lemon juice, I stirred the entire contents of the jar to ensure they were thoroughly mixed. This stirring process is crucial to ensure the weed, salt, and lemon juice combine thoroughly, allowing for even fermentation throughout the jar. Next, I added enough water to the jar and stirred it again until it was evenly distributed. This water serves to provide a medium for the microorganisms to work optimally in breaking down the weeds and producing gas. After all the ingredients are mixed evenly, don't forget to close the jar tightly so that no air can escape. After tightly closing the jar, don't forget to attach electrical tape to the end of the hose you just attached. This tape will seal the hose connection tightly to prevent gas leaks from the fermentation process. I'll tape the other end of the hose to make sure it's neat. This process is just as important as the previous tape 
as both ends of the hose must be tightly sealed to prevent the gas formed in the jar from leaking into the air. With both ends of the hose perfectly sealed, the pressure inside the jar can be maintained, allowing optimal fermentation and the natural gas produced to flow freely when needed. Make sure you attach the insulation neatly and securely to each connection, because this is the key to ensuring the entire gas production process runs optimally without any loss. Once all the ends of the hoses are securely insulated, don't forget to tightly seal the jar lid once more. Properly sealing the jar is crucial to prevent air from entering or escaping ensuring the gas produced from the weed fermentation remains completely contained within the jar. Even the slightest gap can cause the natural gas we produce to leak out, reducing the results. After all the ingredients are mixed well, the tube is insulated, and the jar is closed tightly, now I will store this jar for approximately five days for maximum results. At this stage, I prepared the oxygen I've taken from the aquarium to be used with the natural gas produced from fermenting weeds. This oxygen would then be mixed or circulated together to optimize and stabilize the gas usage process. Now, I'll connect the oxygen hose to the hose already attached to the jar. This step is crucial, so the natural gas produced from the weed fermentation can flow smoothly and mix with the oxygen from the aquarium. By connecting these two hoses tightly, we ensure that the gas flow is stable and nothing is wasted. Make sure the hose connection fits properly and tightly so that pressure is maintained. Because this is where we can begin to see the results of the fermentation process, which has been going on for several days. This simple process allows the natural gas we produce to be used effectively, while also demonstrating how simple materials around us can be converted into useful energy. At this stage, I prepared a piece of metal with holes, which I would later connect to the end of the hose. This holy metal serves as a gas outlet, allowing for more controlled and safe gas flow from the jar. By installing this iron, the natural gas produced from the fermentation of weeds can flow more steadily without spilling or leaking. Ensure the connections are tight and the iron is positioned correctly to ensure the gas can escape smoothly and achieve maximum results. At the connection between the hose and the hollow metal, I applied electrical tape to prevent it from coming loose. This step is crucial to ensure the gas flow from the jar remains stable and prevents any leakage into the air. With tight and strong insulation, the connection between the hose and the iron can withstand gas pressure well, so that the process of using natural gas from fermenting wild grass runs smoothly. Now, I'll show you the weed I've been fermenting for five days in a jar. After a few days of fermentation, the weed, which was once fresh and green, has now become softer and begins to emit a distinctive fermented aroma. Okay, now I'll show you the results. After five days of fermentation, the natural gas from the weed is finally ready to be channeled through the hose and perforated iron we installed earlier. And here's the most amazing moment. The fire burns perfectly.